Hi, my name's Casey Anderson, and with the release of Visual Studio 2017, I'm sure you're going to want to know what's new in debugging and diagnostics. Well, today, I'm going to show you three new things that will help you supercharge your debugging. Let's go. So now that we're in here in Visual Studio 2017, VS 2017 is all about making you faster. And it's about making you more capable of getting where you want to be and having the information that you want to have. So the first example I'm going to show you of one of the things we've done to help you be faster is this new debugging feature called Run to Click. So I've just debugged this application and I've hit a breakpoint here. One of the things you may or may not notice is I've got this little green glyph that shows up as I'm hovering over these different lines in my code. What is that, you ask? Well, th that is the icon for run to click. So when I hover over this, you can see that the tooltip says run execution to here. Now I'm going to click on it, and you're going to see that, oh, types to test is null. Now I click on it, and types to test has value. So I have executed that line of code and stopped here. It's just like run to cursor, except in the palm of your hand, point and click debugging. As I want to keep inspecting my variables, I'm going to just keep clicking it and go, OK, variable looks good, variable looks good. Let's get down to my for each loop. Let's get in here. Variables look good, you know, as I keep inspecting them. And one of the other great things is that I don't have to set a breakpoint or on each of these lines that I want to look at. I can just go directly to that line and run the code along the way. So in this for each loop, you'll see that my first app type is web. Well, if I click on this same line of code again, what's going to happen? I'm going to get a different app type because I'm in the next iteration of my for each loop. And if I do that one more time, you'll see that I'm at my last app type, which is desktop. Now here's the tricky part. If I do it again, my application, it's like hitting F5 and not hitting a breakpoint on this line. So I'm back into my application. Now here's a fun trick. When I click Run Tests, it remembers, well, it remembers what breakpoint I had just previously set. So just to repeat, you'll see that I hit that breakpoint, and then I had clicked on this line. So I am now stopped on that line of code. So Run to Click, this beautiful green glyph here, is a quick way for you to navigate through your code. So now that we've got that, Code navigation, fast, in your face. Let's go to um, information that you want fast and in your face. So I'm going to go ahead and click this error button right here. Now, what do you think it's going to do? Of course, it's going to give me an error. And when I stop in my code, I've broken right at the location that this exception has been thrown. This might look a little different than what you're used to. That's because this is the new exception helper that's brand new in 2017. Um, we want to give you the information you care about, so we've included the exception type, an exception message, and instant access to any inner exceptions that are on this line of code that this exception has. Before, you would have to click on the details, and you'd have to drill down. And maybe there were 10, 20 exceptions, inner exceptions that you'd have to drill down into. Well, no more. Now you have instant access to the inner and innermost exceptions. Great. Now, the next thing I want to show you also involves our exception helper, and it involves getting you to the information that you want quicker. When I click on this last button here, you'll notice I get another exception thrown. Oh, by the way, the reason I'm getting these exception thrown is because down here in the exception settings, I have common language runtime exceptions set to break when thrown. So basically, this is indicating to the debugger that you want to stop when these exceptions are thrown, an exception breakpoint, so to speak. When I'm glancing at this exception type and message, I can see that it's a argument exception. And as I examine it, it's going to throw every single time I can't find a key that um, that doesn't exist right now for, for the purpose that this app is running in. So it says key two here. 
and I continue, it says key three. I don't know how many keys there are. There could be 100 keys. I don't wanna sit here and click continue every time to get to the exceptions that I care about. But argument exception is pretty common. I also don't want to turn off breaking on that entire type of exception. Well, as I examine this, I'm looking at my call stack and I can see, oh, this is occurring in my settings library. Well, if I don't care about this exception, but I want to care about this type of exception, we've added the ability to add conditions on this exception type. So right down here in the exception settings, which you can collapse if it's something you don't wanna look at, but right now I'm gonna show you that break when this exception type is thrown is here, except when thrown from settings library.dll. And now when I check this box and hit continue, like I said, there could be 100 keys in here. When I hit continue, I'm not going to break on a single argument exception at this particular DLL again. So I've broken on the next exception that I actually care about that's actually in my main project. Um, and so I'll just show you that again, guys, where when I click this button, I'm not gonna break on any of those argument exceptions and I'm just gonna break on this exception that I care about. Now I'll go back to the exception settings window and show you kind of what is going on. So when I look at my argument exception here, you can see that it has a condition. And when I click on this and go to edit, I can see that the full condition that was set for me was module name not equals project archive dot settings library dot DLL. This can be applied at individual exception types so we did it for argument exception, but I can also apply it to all of my common language runtime exceptions, so all of my .NET exceptions. Let's pretend I'm working with some third-party library that throws exceptions left, right, and center, and I just don't wanna break on those. I don't care about breaking on those. So I can go to edit conditions, and I can type in, for example, and I can use wildcards, so stars, so I can go settings library, and Anything that contains the name settings library, whether it's .dll or .exe, um, will not break for any .NET uh, runtime exception. Great. So that's a second advantage of the new exception helper. And the third one I've left on the screen here, and maybe you've already read it, um, it's this null reference analysis. So the exception that I cared about breaking on was this null reference exception. And right here, nestled in to the main message, is number prime return null. And git prime is bolded. When I look back at my code where this is pointing, I see I've got prime getter .get prime help get prime calculate. And oftentimes I encounter this because I can be a lazy developer. I don't want to separate these things out into individual lines. Um, so I'll go a.b.c.d.x. And then if I get a null reference exception, I can't exactly um, hover over these objects to see what was returned. But now it, I can have this null reference analysis in my face. So I can clearly see that get prime right here was what returned null to cause my null reference exception. So hopefully the, this will help you uh, debug faster. Those are basically the three things I wanted to show you for our new exception helper, inner exceptions, exception conditions, and null reference analysis. The last thing I wanna show you um, might be for our medium, medium to advanced users of Visual Studio. If you're familiar with attached to process, so I launched this application just from my toolbar right here, I'm going to debug attached to process it. Um, I kind of don't wanna look through this whole list to find the name Project Archive. We've added a search filter in attached to process for you. So I'm gonna go ahead and look up project and it instantly searches my list down to Project Archive because that's the only app that contains it. And I'm gonna hit attach right here. And I want to show you that I actually did attach to this. So let's go ahead and hit, hit that exception again, that null reference exception is gonna come up. And now I've kind of approved, so to speak, that I've attached to this application. So now I'm going to stop debugging and my app is still running. 
you can see that I'm clicking the buttons, I'm clicking error, um, and I'm not breaking, so I'm not attached. Well, I could go debug attached to process. Oh, but wait, what is this new menu item? We've got reattached to process now? What's that gonna do? Well, I'll tell you, it's gonna reattach to process that I just attached to. So I'm gonna click that, and I've started debugging again now, and it's just this, and when I click on that button, par, that I've been clicking on, I break on that exception again. So, um, reattached to process is matched by uh, process ID, and if it's a different process ID, we match by name. So I'm gonna go ahead and close this process, start up a new one, um, kind of prove to you that there's nothing up my sleeve, so to speak, reattach the process again, and I've attached. Now, you might be asking, oh, what happens if I have multiple processes with the same name? Well, you get to pick. So I'll start another app up here. Now I've got two going on, debug, reattach the process, Oh, and because I had the same process ID, it picked that one. Ooh, it was sneaky on me. So it attached to the first process that I wanted it to. Um, so we'll close both of these now, just for dramatic effect. Start up two new processes and do debug reattached process. And it pulls up the attached to process dialog with a picker for me. So now I get to choose which of these that I want to attach to. And so I do that. Um, and that is an easier way to get into debugging faster. So Great, now that you've seen our three new things, run to click, the new exception helper, and reattach to process, I have additional resources for you to check out to learn more. So go ahead and follow our blog and follow me on Twitter. Thanks for watching.